Hello students, in this video lecture, I will be discussing about object-oriented programming. So, before going to object-oriented programming, we should understand POP, that is Procedural Oriented Programming, where there is a single program in which there are several functions. So, the several functions work interdependently in a single program. Like if I give you an example of procedural oriented programming, say if I assign some uh, one student of mine to arrange a picnic, if I uh, ask him to arrange a picnic, so what he will do? He will uh, look into the travel, he will look into the food, he will look into the uh, location he will look into the finance so these all are needed for a picnic to happen right so these are different functions travel is a different function uh, finance is a different function food is a different function location is a different function but all is being handled by a single student of mine that is a single program so that is pop so it may become problematic it may become erroneous because a single person is handling all the functions so it is difficult because if uh, the entire thing gets uh, complex so or uh, the amount of people gets increased so it will become problematic it will become complex there may be chance of probability of errors so that's why this is what POP, the concept of POP is and that's why we use this concept of POP du, du, uh, basically during the uh, when we are learning programming language when we are uh, using the basic concepts of programming language when we are doing basic programming when we are not doing so much complex programming we mainly make use of POP but after uh, using POP there comes the concept of OOP object oriented programming here there is a single unit that is having the variables and the related methods so this we can uh, explain in a better way with this diagram so if a class is there say dog is a class so what data members it may have it may have the data members as breed it may have data members as size it may have data member as age, it may have data member as color. So every dog has a breed, has a size, has an age, has a color. And method, it can have the different behaviors of the dog. As we have seen that what are uh, methods, it's nothing but a representation of the behaviors. So different behaviors of a dog, eat, sleep, sit, run, all these are different behaviors of a dog. So, this is nothing but a class, which is a blueprint, which is a template for a dog. But, when in actual, in real life, a dog, we are treating a dog, then that is nothing but a object. In real life, when a dog is coming, this, this class is a template. Like dog may have, uh, dog will have actually these data members and these methods. But in real life, when a dog is coming, say dog one then this dog one will have all the instances of this data members and methods that's why we are saying that object is instance of a class because this dog one is actually a dog which is having all this breed size age color eat sleep sit run so it will have different values in this uh, uh, data members and the methods for dog one and when we are treating a dog two then another dog so it may vary in breed it may vary in size it may have a different age different color but it is another dog so dog one is one dog dog two is another dog likewise dot 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 there is dog n n number of dogs so do those n number of dogs are nothing but the objects are the real life objects which are 
taking the which is which is actually the real life objects and which are the instances of the class which are taking help of the class the format which is there already and with the help of the format that each real life instances can be represented so with help of this class format that is dog format i am representing the real life dog1 dog2 dot 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 to dog n now we will discuss the concepts of oop the first one being encapsulation what is encapsulation encapsulation is wrapping up of data and its behaviors that is methods under a single unit like characteristics and behavior so let me make it very easy and short we are wrapping up of the characteristics like if i uh, think about the example of dog dog is a unit dog is a class dog is a unit where we are wrapping up of characteristics like breed size color those are characteristics and we are wrapping up of behaviors what may be our behavior of a dog eat sit bark so these are the behaviors of a dog so wrapping up of data that is characteristics and its associated associated behaviors like it is uh, the barking or the eating is associated with dog so data members and this associated member functions under a single unit that is a encapsulated unit that we can call in the class object format we can call it as a class so that is encapsulation so encapsulation is wrapping up of data members and its associated member functions under a single unit that is actually data encapsulation second one abstraction abstraction so what is abstraction so i can give you a, a simple uh, uh, very easy example if you go to a ice cream shop so there they ask you how many scoops you want one scoop or two scoop so if you say i need uh, ice, a chocolate ice cream so they will only ask you how many scoops you need and they will give you that only they will not give you the entire chocolate uh, container chocolate ice cream container they will not give you so that means the relevant portion which you want they are giving you not the background details there may be so much ice cream present in the uh, container but they will not give you that container or that remaining part of the ice cream they will only give you one scoop or two scoop which you have asked for so that is abstraction so abstraction means taking out the relevant details scooping out the relevant details and not including the background details so we don't want the background details whatever is happening in background we don't want we want the relevant details that means another example i can give if you go to a uh, uh, car mechanic if your car is not working you want your car to get uh, in a operable mode you don't need or you don't want the background details which Uh, where there is the problem where what they are doing you don't want that. you don't want the background details we want the frontal details the details which are relevant to us clear yeah? so that is abstraction third one inheritance inheritance so what is it uh, the easiest example we can have like uh, grandfather father son so grandfather from grandfather father is coming from father son is coming that means from grandfather father is coming i mean to say that father is having his own characteristics own features and he is inheriting some of its some of his features from grandfather like we say like father looks like looks like grandfather that means father is not grandfather but father is inheriting some characteristics from grandfather like we may say the eyes the eye color of father is same as 
the eye color the unique eye color of grandfather that means father is inheriting some features from the grandfather he he is inheriting the characteristics he may inherit behavior as well father works like grandfather that means he is inheriting behavior so it, a, a class if i think about a class a class may inherit data members or it may inherit methods it may inherit characteristics or it may inherit the methods or the behaviors clear so if, what is inheritance when inheritance is when one class derives some of its characteristics or all of its characteristics not all possible uh, because in real life everything is not inherited there is uniqueness so some of its characteristics from another class then it is a uh, inheritance clear so the class which is deriving the characteristics is known as a derived class and the class from which it is deriving the upper class is known as a base class so grandfather in this case is a base class and father in this case is a derived class again son in this case is a derived class because son is inheriting from father he may inherit from grandfather as well because uh, father is inheriting from grandfather so son is a derived class and father and grandfather is the base class immediate base class is father and then grandfather clear so this is inheritance and the fourth one polymorphism polymorphism <coughs> polymorphism means same thing different characteristics like if i am teaching computer science i am signing as a computer teacher if again i am teaching maths then i am signing as a maths teacher but i remain same but i am doing different work so my when i am same the class is same the uh, the block is same the operational block is same but there is different signature then it is polymorphism remember one thing op object oriented programming is very much in use for real for depicting real life entities so the features the concepts the pillars which i have uh, given lecture on that is encapsulation abstraction inheritance polymorphism all are very important and all are creating the base of oop and to denote the or depict the real life existence so object oriented programming is very very important and crucial to learn thank you for hearing and noting down this video lecture hope you have enjoyed if you have any queries just note it down you can mail the queries to me i will be providing my mail id if you want you can mail the queries to me or you can cons consult your respective institute thank you so much